box pause. Are you awake? I will be. Would have been nice to have that cappuccino. Hi everybody, welcome to Off Our Needles. I'm Tracy. I'm Jody. And we are the Grocery Girls. Today we are talking about stack stitches and the fox paws phenomenon. You know what we're talking about. The fox paws is like iconic. You know it when you see it. It and is. It's super popular, designed by Zandy Peters. Yeah, and you actually started knitting one. I started a swatch yeah. and I can't wait to show you guys. So I've just started my swatch for the fox paws to see how my colors are going to look and practice the stitches because they're very new to me, this technique. Um, and it's a series of stacked stitches, which I had never tried before. Okay. And you take one stitch and you create a whole bunch of them. And it makes these teardrop shapes where you've started with one stitch and you create a whole bunch of them. And then uh, you decrease them on, on the next row back. And I'm proud to admit I only ripped it out once so wow. far. Impressive. <laughs> so what makes this so fussy that everybody sort of talks about that this is a really tricky knit? You know, you and I have done knit, you know, where you change one stitch into two or three stitches. Yeah. This is sort of an extreme increase and an extreme decrease. She gives you some tips about that in the pattern and it's really, I think everybody should try it. It's not as hard as you think. Was it hard to knit? I found it very different. I did have to go a little bit slower, but I really did love the way it went. It would be a slower project yeah. for me, but I love what you get when you knit it. Did you find it was addictive to knit? Like you wanted to see that paw emerge? Yeah, I did. And then after the pattern row, you do get a little four row stockinette break. So I kind of had that little milestone where you want to get through the patterning and then take it easy for a few rows. And I loved it. And I do love changing colors a lot because every garter bump, every two rows is a new color. This has umpteen combinations that you can work with and yes. that really changes the look of it. So Crafty has made it super easy and they've put together some kits for this fox paw shawl. I love a kit. And I think one of the tips too is you can never be too crazy with this pattern. No. I think the beautiful contrast makes the pattern really stand out. These kits are amazing. I love this kind of jewel tone one we've got going on right here. And you really, really want the high contrast of different colors because that's sort of what makes this paw emerge, right? Yeah. yeah. And really get the distinction between the rows. When you got your yarn to knit this, yeah. does the pattern tell you how to place your pots of color or your more neutrals? How does that work? Yeah, that's such a good question, Thank smarty you. pants. Okay, actually, really, this pattern comes with a coloring sheet that helps you plan your stripe sequence. Does she talk about where she thinks different colors should well, be? Well, every stripe is going to change. So in your first repeat of your fox paws, you know, the paw is one shape in one row and then it keeps oh, alternating. So it is not a repetitive pattern in the way that you're doing the same colors every repeat. There's some beautiful color combos by the kits and I really love this earthy one right here with the pop of kind of that mustardy yellow. But the high contrast, I think, really brings the pattern to life. You also mentioned there was a link to a YouTube channel. Tell me about that. So Zandi Peters herself has some instructional tip videos on her own YouTube channel. Didn't you find that very helpful? I watched them before I started my knitting and maybe that's why I only ripped it out once because I was able to watch her yeah. a few times doing it. Super helpful. I loved it. I thought that was great support. Okay, so we hope you guys will be adventurous enough to make your own fox paw. I do. I think you should challenge yourself even to just get going with a swatch. Um, it is, isn't it just a stunning piece? I really would love I to have one of these to wear. I will never knit one, <laughs> but I really Don't love say it. never. You never know. Never say never. If you're looking for any information about this video and the link to the kit back at craftsy.com, you'll find that in the description box below. Absolutely. So we're super excited today that we get to chat via Skype with Zandi Peters, who is the designer of Fox Paws. Absolutely. It is such a gorgeous, almost iconic pattern. Zandi, how did the Fox Paws pattern come to be? How did you discover those stacked stitches? I sat down and kind of brainstormed what's new and exciting and what could be really innovative and came up with the idea of these really wavy stripes. And then, you know, I just sat down with my notebook and started trying to knit them. I fell a few times, and then eventually I figured out that if you put the stitches on top of each other, you could actually get that really um, vertical effect in your stripes. And 
imitating some commercial uh, fashion fabrics that are available on the market that were previously too difficult to knit by hand. So Sandy, how has the fox paw impacted your design career? Well, when I first came up with it, I was actually working as a footwear designer. So I've always been a designer of something. When fox paws came out and I expected no reaction at all because it was so complicated and it was so weird and different from what people were used to knitting. So when it came out and it had that reaction, I actually was eventually able to say, I don't want to freelance in the footwear industry anymore. I'm going to knit full time, which has been really great for me. It's much less stressful. That is an amazing thing to be able to devote yourself full time like that. Today, we're hoping to demystify the fox paws pattern a little bit for the everyday knitter. Um, it's all those giant increases and decreases. We're hoping you can give us a few tips for someone that may be struggling with the pattern or just thinking about attempting it. So the first thing that I always tell people is to expect to mess up a few times. I do have YouTube videos to help people and I have some blog posts on my blog. Those are kind of to help people if they want to learn a little bit more about the math behind it. Do you have tips for counting stitches in this pattern? Because that can be a tricky area as well. In the pattern, one of the things that I recommend for people is not to use wooden needles. People claim that their wooden needles broke under tension of all the stitches. So I recommend no wooden needles. I also recommend circular needles. The reason for circular needles, when you use the circulars and you have that flexible cord, after you complete each increase, it looks kind of like a clump of stitches. If you guys have ever done it, you know what I'm talking about, where it's just like a big bunch. But if you slide that out onto the cord and pull it up from the middle, you can actually get the whole increase to spread out and you can count the stitches individually and make sure that they're all right um, as you go during the row. I also have been putting more markers into patterns lately because those seem to help people. As for counting that pulling up the cord trick, it really, really helps. I also recommend that if your count is off on an, on an increase, just do it over because it's like it's impossible to fix. Those are amazing tips. I think that's fantastic. And I would think too, you want to make sure you're not knitting too tightly, right? You want to be nice and loose with your tension. So inherently, the increase and the decrease have different tension just because of what they're made of. So I actually tell people to try, if they can, to keep the increases at the tips of the needles so they're a little tighter than the decreases because the increases tend to have like some holes in them, which when colors laid over, you can't really see them. But if you're making something, you don't necessarily want that disparity of gauge. So I tell people basically, if they're uncomfortable and they can't get their stitches to move, size up. But other than that, I try to keep people from sizing up their needles too much because they get these gaping holes. So Zandi, what is on your needles these days? What are you working on that's as exciting and beautiful as this fox paws? I'm doing a fox paws in brioche stitch, which I haven't really tried brioche. I'm trying it now because I have to learn how to do the basic stuff before I can start putting the stack stitches into it and making my fox paws brioche scarf. But last night I figured out brioche lace. If you've seen brioche, instead of regular increases, brioche lace has an eyelet in it where you increase. So that was interesting. Well, that, we're looking forward to seeing that. That sounds crazy and beautiful. Zandi, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about fox paws. It is a stunning pattern. It is one of those iconic pieces, you know, just in a second when you see it. So we really appreciate you stopping by to talk to us about that. Thanks, Zandi. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Wasn't that amazing, picking Zandi's brain all about this pattern? It's always fun when we actually get to speak to the designer. She gave amazing tips, and I think that's going to help tons of us knitters. It is. And guess what? We've got a coupon code for you. What? If you want to knit your own, 
box pause. There's a coupon code link in the description box below. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss anything off our needles. And don't forget to leave a comment. We love reading what you guys have to say. So let us know maybe what your colors are and if you or if you are going to cast on a box paw. Absolutely. We will see you next time on Off Our Needles. Bye. Happy knitting.